Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles in partnership with Movie Maker Magazine. My name is Danny DeLillo, we'll be at the South Park Center and I'm delighted to know Peter who's come all the way in from Minnesota with his fantastic animation, Whiteness of Work. Let's take another clip. White people don't like to talk about being white. He, he wrote down my race. Why did he do that? I mean, we tend to make everything about whiteness. He wrote down my race. He just, he wrote down when, when. But we rarely call it what it is. Peter, thank you so much for flying in for a couple of days to be with us. Really, really fantastic to have you here and welcome to the New Filmmakers LA family. Uh, for those that haven't seen your film, tell us a brief synopsis. Yeah, uh, Whiteness at Work is a stop motion animation and it follows a character as he stumbles through these awkward memories of the formation of his understanding of race. So as a young white guy in Minnesota, um, the character is an animated proxy for myself. Uh, he thinks about all the times that race was ignored or um, overlooked or sort of brushed past in order for everyone to feel comfortable and um, not so awkward. So this guy is kind of rehashing some of those memories, trying to uh, make peace with his understanding of race and really see all the deficits in his life when it comes to understanding his own white privilege. Um, obviously, you alluded to a little bit where the inspiration came from. Um, it's you know wonderfully done in stop motion. I thought the, the script and the story was was really good and really important. Could be could be sent to a lot of people that um, don't seem to understand in today's day. Uh, for you personally, when was the idea that you wanted to turn this into a film? Yeah, so I teach at a little school called Saint Olaf College in Northfield, Minnesota. And in 2017, there were these protests by our students of color really calling out the institutional racism and the individual racism among uh, all sorts of people there who really weren't paying attention to that. And sadly, it really kind of caught me off guard in 2017. I really you know, wasn't aware of my own whiteness and, and the privilege and the power that comes with that. Um, but even more so, I was surprised at some of my white students and how they really felt like these protests didn't have anything to do with them, that it was about the students of color and that white students sort of had a pass on, you know, what, to, what they had to do about it or their responsibility to do something about it, right? So I was thinking about my students, I was thinking about my own life, um, just realizing how little race is talked about, and this is, you know, five, seven years ago before this kind of big racial awakening in the United States most recently in 2020. And so, yeah, the inspiration really came from my students who were challenging me, uh, both in really good ways and in, in ways where there was some complacency. And so I wanted to kind of draw on that energy, um, think about my own whiteness, my own privilege. Um, and then of course, when I was doing research, I was thinking about um, this really important essay called um, White Privilege Unpacking the Invisible Knapsack by Peggy McIntosh. It's kind of an important um, essay where she just lists all the things that, you know, all the places where she has comfort that people of color may not uh, be able to have the same comforts and privileges. So uh, in some ways my film takes a very similar approach where I just kind of lay out these moments where I, as a white male, um, have had just, you know, uh, an unfair and un... Um, unreasonable amount of privilege in mm -hmm. these different situations. So the film is really coming out of that from my students, from my own research, uh, and then really, you know, a lot of my work explores kind of the people and places around me and, mm -hmm. and the, thing, the things that I feel like are a little bit off. And so this is one of those moments where um, I'm looking at my own identity, my own personal experience as it relates to this broader context of white privilege. Um, I love that the inspiration came from your students, yeah. um, you know, and I'm sure, you know, as a teacher, you obviously you want the best for your students, especially the best for their environment. And, um, and so I'm curious, like, what, what did you say to them did, when you were made, did you tell them you were making this stop motion film? Like, how did you approach them? What did they, what did they think? Yeah, that's a great question. 
At the time, I think I was so uncomfortable talking about whiteness that I was sort of internalizing a lot and just kind of moving ahead quietly and thinking about how I can get research and more information. And so I, uh, I bet there was a three-year span where I was just reading nothing but you know, nonfiction about race and power and privilege. Um, and then you know, watching films, maybe films, animations, other um, uh, like radio podcasts um, of, of a similar nature. So, you know, probably in the moment I didn't do enough to say, you know, that you all are inspiring me, but it really was this catalyst for me to start doing the research, start doing the work, start thinking about my own experience with race, and then making the film later. Mm -hmm. um, but as the film progressed, you know, as I wrote the script, as I started um, making the props and sets and puppets, I actually got to um, work with some of my later students. So in 2021, I got to work with a handful of students to really help me make the film. So they were involved in a lot of the pre-production and some of the production. And so that was a really great way to kind of bring it back full circle to those students. Uh, even though they're a different generation of students, um, it really still felt like a meaningful interaction to have them involved. Uh, what I really um loved about your film in terms of uh, obviously what you saw, I mean visually it was a great stop motion animation and, and, and my goodness me, very talented. Um, but it was also just the fact that you didn't, um, you didn't uh, glorify it, you know, you really put in script there of, of absolute truth mm -hmm. um, of white privilege and you didn't shy away from that and I was really glad that you did, you know, did really em embrace it um, and, that, and that privilege within the dialogue and the script that you put in there. Was that something you were very conscientious of putting out there because, you know, I think it's vitally important for people to acknowledge their privileges? Yeah, absolutely. I was really thinking about how do I make this film accessible enough that people can kind of get into it with maybe a little bit of humor. Yeah. You know, the technique of stop motion animation is generally thought of as an entertaining mm -hmm. um, format, right? So I think I was thinking both about tools to draw the audience in and then content that would really challenge an audience. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's just a whole range of, of audiences um, experience talking about whiteness or thinking about race as well. So there are some audience who are audiences who are just right there with me and they, they kind of get it and they um, see it as a critique maybe of other people, right? Mm -hmm. And then there are other people who maybe haven't thought about it as much and they see the film and they just sit there in silence and sort of uh, feel you know, awkward and, and impatient with the film even though it's only six minutes long, right? So I think finding that middle ground is really hard because some people are so, you know, well-versed in this sort of material by now. And some people really haven't thought about it at all. So mm. finding, I didn't want it to be middle of the road, right? I wanted it to be challenging enough um, that it, it could, you know, really make a lot of people think twice about their yeah. own experiences, right? Um, let's just talk about the, the actual production side of things. Yeah. So I thought the, you know, Stop Animation was, was magnificent. I, I really enjoyed watching visually what you created. Um, but uh, making a stop motion six minutes is it's not easy. How long was that process that you took to make and create those characters? So the entire production took about two years to make. Um, we started with the puppets and the characters. We got slowed down a bit by COVID, uh, but then we jumped into the animation once that was all done. Um, that was done over a summer um, with a really talented animator, Bryn Gordon, who's here in LA. And then we, I don't know why I decided to do this, but I decided to do all the eyes and eyebrows and blinks in post-production. Okay. And so that took quite a while yeah. as well. Uh, and then, of course, the other editing and, and color correcting and sound design mm -hmm. and, and all that. Um, so it took about two and a half years from start to finish, which is yeah. a long time. Yeah. Um, of course, I teach as well, so it's, it's not my full-time job. But mm -hmm. um, I was really, you know, I, in the grand scheme of things, I'm really pleased that it, it didn't go longer, especially you know when you think about all the the hardships of COVID and how that really slowed things down. Yeah, of course. And um, yeah, and I just had so many great collaborators in that process. So even though it took a long time, it was a really rich experience working with lots of great people to make it all come together. So obviously, it started with being inspired by your students. Yeah. So then, what was the reaction from your students when you showed it to them? Yeah, I think my students have been some of the most supportive. Uh, 
people in this whole process. Um, not only did they inspire it, they helped make it, and then when I showed it to them, they gave me feedback and critique even before it was totally ready for product or for uh, putting out into the world with film festivals. And so I really, really rely on my students and respect my students so much because they have so much to bring. Um, students now, you know, are, are that much more aware of, of whiteness and, and racial privilege um, than they were 10 years ago. And so I felt like they had a fresh take on the, mm -hmm. the content and were able to give me some really good advice on, on how to frame certain things. And so, yeah, my students have generally been really supportive. Um, yeah, and I'm so grateful for it. Oh, well, it's, it's so nice because I, I knew, it's so funny, I knew you had the teacher instincts because you immediately took an interest to our students here. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, that's a sign of a good teacher. Always, you know, always, always interested in, in students. And I love honestly how, you know, you're allowed your students to kind of critique and, and work yeah. with you on that yeah. as well. There's so much we can learn from each other. Yeah. Um, what is next for you? If you're going to get time to do anything else, what is next yeah. for you when you're yeah. teaching? Yeah, that's a great question. So. I really think of myself more as an artist than a filmmaker. So mm -hmm. I've, I've done a lot of video art, performance, photography, um, multimedia installation. And so even though this project is a stop motion animation, I'm not really sure what's next. I think I might be doing an interview with my dad who's actually experiencing some dementia and memory loss right mm. now. That's a, a theme I've explored in past work and I'm yeah. kind of curious to explore it again in an even more personal way. Um, but I'm also thinking about a, a fiction film um, based on a short story that I read recently that I absolutely love, and so we'll see if I can make that happen. But um, yeah, I feel like as an artist, there's so many possibilities, so it, yeah. it, we'll see what happens. You never know where your inspiration is going to come That's from right. next. That's right. Um, well, listen, thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate you coming in from Minnesota. Uh, thank you for, for your film as well, and uh, looking forward to your next project. Thank you very much. My pleasure, thank and you. thanks so much to NFMLA for having me. Thank you. Thanks.